How's it going, everybody? I'm back uh, to do uh, another year in my greatest heavy metal songs of the 80s, year by year, and we are at 1982. Uh, man, so, you know, I've never really stopped to just look at the individual years of the 80s. Uh, of course, my heyday kind of is in the later 80s, so looking back at the early 80s for me is, I'm like, oh, that came out then, and uh, wow, that was on that album. Uh, even though I was kind of into metal. I was still very, very young. Uh, so I was born 74. So in 1982, we're talking, I'm eight. But at eight years old, I, I, I knew who Iron Maiden was, Black Sabbath, uh, and uh, a few other bands. Of course, Ozzy Solo, uh, because of my brother. Um, but um, looking back here, these are kind of bands that I got into on my own, uh, of course, years later. So 1982, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, wow, that album came out, and that album came out, and I'm like, man, 1982 was not a bad year, but it doesn't get talked about a lot. So, I've narrowed it down to three songs. I think all three songs could easily be number one, and so really, it, come, it, it came down to, I guess, which one just I liked the best, because all three are innovative tracks, they're, uh, they've stood the test of time. They're still being played by the bands when they play live. So, you know, they really met the same criteria. And so it really came down to me is, is which album, or sorry, which song do I like the best? So let's count them down. Um, so Screaming for Vengeance came out in 82. Wow. This album, fantastic. I, I rank this up there. I know, you know, some people probably put this more towards the middle of the pack, but I, I kind of have it up towards second. Uh, I love it. And the song off of here that I would pick would be You've Got Another Thing Coming. Uh, a couple things with this album. You know, it, it still maintained that heavier direction that Judas Priest had started to go to, but it also retained the, the melodic, uh, song structure, uh, the guitars and the vocals, of course, the vocals being amazing, the guitars being amazing, drums. Uh, but it, you've got another thing coming. You've got that heaviness, but you've also got uh, melody in there. And so, you know, it was a song that was played uh, on the radio, and it really uh, broke Judas Priest open in North America. Uh, I was reading, and uh, this, they, you know, I read about this album, and they're talking about how this this album right here is what kind of knocked down the door for Jesus Priest in North America, which I didn't know, you know. So, uh, but yeah, number three again could easily be number one. I know it's probably a lot of people's fav favorite song of that year, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. And then coming in at number two, except Restless and Wild. Uh, the song that I would choose off of this album, anybody know? That's right, Fast as a Shark. Uh, again, love this album. I, there's only a couple songs I don't like on it. I don't say I don't like them, they just don't stand out. But uh, I like Princess of the Dawn, I love that song, of course. And um, Neon, Neon Nights, is it it? Uh, yeah. Side two is okay. Side one's just awesome. Yeah, Neon Nights. That's it. Really, really dig that. And Dog Go Stealing My Soul Away on his side two's a uh, decent track. But man, that Princess of the Dawn. Oh, 
it, it could easily be in here as well, in my opinion. But, Fast as the Shark's on here. Why? Some people, and I'm not saying I'm one of them, I'm not saying I agree or disagree, but some people say it's the first speed metal song. That really doesn't bother me, you know, whether it is or isn't. I don't really get into that. But what I really get into is the fact that that song kicks your teeth in when it starts with those drums and everything. And that uh, Udo's uh, vocals, man, it's just an aggressive, heavy song. And it really just come out of nowhere, you know. It's like, to me, except was kind of starting to go down the path of like ACDC, you know, where the simple song structures, they're catchy, they're, you know, they're good songs, but they're not uh, terribly complex. But man, that's a... It's, Restless and Wild as an album is great, man. It's it's got all kinds of different tempos. You've got your slow songs, your fast songs, your in-between. But they had never done anything like Fast as a Shark. And I remember the first time I heard it, I, you know, I I imagined the whole album was like speed metal, thrash. Well, I almost say thrash, but speed metal. Uh, and, and, you know, and then I get it and I'm like, well, this has some of that in it, but it's also got very, very hard rock and it's got some very melodic tunes in there, Princess of the Dawn, uh, featuring like some uh, Russian melodies in there. So really, really blown away by, by that album and that song. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great album. So I can't recommend any of these albums enough. And then I forgot to grab this album, but number one, can anybody guess 1982? Iron Maiden, Run to the Hills. Uh, why did I pick that? Everything I described on the other, the stay in power, uh, the impact that it had on metal, uh, you know, did do bands today owe anything to that song? And I think Iron Maiden is just one of those bands that lots of bands will look back on and say, I played metal because of that album or that song. And Run to the Hills, I read somewhere the other day, it's been played live. Since that album was released, it's been played live in every show but like two. And I can't remember the it had a reason for why they played. Like, I went and saw Iron Maiden, and it was on a, the tour they were doing. And uh, they were going back and playing um, the full album to the Seventh Son of the Seventh Son, but they still played Run of the Hills on it. So, And speaking of, like, Iron Maiden and that album, you could easily say Hallow Be Thy Name could be number one, too, in my opinion. Uh, just a great song. It solidified uh, Iron Maiden, you know, they had had Pauliano doing vocals, and I have nothing against him, but they were playing, you know, clubs and smaller, you know, smaller venues, and then they add Bruce Dickinson with his operatic vocals, and the songs become these complex songs uh, with that, that Steve Harris fretless bass lines and so much melody in it, like every song has a melody, whether it's fast or slow. Iron Maiden puts like memorable guitar riffs in every song, just about. Um, but Run to the Hills, that whole album with that lineup, it solidified Iron Maiden as like a force in metal. Um, tons of bands now go back and quote uh, the number of the beast, the album that Run the Hills is on, as a huge influence. And it's just an amazing song, musically, lyrically. Uh, the videos, uh, you know, it's got the clips from the Old West or, uh, you know, the uh, fights between, like, cowboys and the Indians and things like that. So um, I can remember being young and listening to that with my brother, and I was just like, that That was one of those songs that just, I, I still, it blows me away when I hear it still. It's still, like, I never get tired of hearing it. So, and uh, How to Be Thy Name is, is right there. I mean, like, neck and neck with it. They could go either way off that album. But that's my number one for 1982. And uh, let me know what you think. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody for watching. And uh, love to hear what you guys think about 1982 and 3 and 84 and so on and so on. So uh, if you hadn't watched, I got 80 and 81 are up as well. So go back and watch those if you haven't and let me know your thoughts on those. But thanks for watching and be back soon for 1983 big year. Take care, everybody. Fun out.